Tanya, you ready? Listen up, listen in. 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 Thanks for tuning in. Let's have a conversation. Talking worldwide, it don't matter your location. What you going through in the topic may have relation. Let's get some motivation. Let's swap out education. Every Friday we heal, laugh, improve, and grow. Put some nutrients in your mind, give you food for the soul. I know you pumped and prepared for your weekend and low. Might as well join the discussion and tune into the show. Do you have a passion project you'd like to bring to life? Let Jamila Adams at Your Service help you. Jamila Adams at Your Service was created to assist businesswomen 40 plus by bringing their passion project to life through website design and marketing. Visit her website, jamilaadamsatyourservice.com and register for a free 30 minute consultation. Remember, you have a voice, use it. This time, for some pasta out there. Check out Hostile Therapy with Big Red on Thursdays at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss it. Live on YouTube. Hey, everybody. What's going on? This is Preezy from Listen Up, Listen In Podcast. I hope everybody is having a wonderful day. And before I even get started, I'd like to say all praise to Jehovah God and Jesus Christ every day. Amen. And, of course, y'all know how I do. I always have special guests coming on my show. And I have a very special guest today. But before I let this young lady come on and tell her about herself, let me tell you a little bit about her. Waterfall Adams is a creative professional who took her destiny into her own hands. Her real name is Veronica Smith Adams. She was born in Paducah. I hope I'm saying this right. (laughs) Paducah, no. Paducah, Kentucky, and was raised in Mobile, Alabama. If I ain't say that right, she gonna tell me. She has an Associate of Science in General Education degree from Bishop State Community College and a Bachelor of Arts degree in Art History with a Dramatic Arts minor from the University of South Alabama. So without further ado, let's give a round of applause for Miss Waterfall Adams. Thanks for having me. Hey, Miss Waterfall, how you doing? I know, I think I messed that. I think I messed up, didn't I? Messed that name up? <laughs> uh, well, my middle name is Elizabeth, but thanks for having me. No, no, I'm talking about where you came from, where you, I think oh, I messed it up. Did I say it right, Paducah, but Paducah? Yes, it's, uh, yes, it's Paducah. Oh, all right, Paducah, okay, there you go, Paducah, Kentucky. All right, so, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, how you got started, what you do, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I ask you how your day was? How's your day? It's okay. It's just okay? Nothing exciting? Just trying to make more money, that's all. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. Oh, we all need to make more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a lot of bills. Now, tell my audience, I, I said a little bit about your bio. I don't want to tell all. That's your story. Tell my audience who Miss Waterfalls Adams is. Well, Waterfall Adams, she's a a work in progress. I got started with uh, writing poetry around like high school. And when I was at South, I did recite my poetry and did for the Benson talent shows. Well, I didn't win any talent shows, but hey, I didn't get booed. Oh, that's that's cool. Yes, go ahead. I always did want to write a book one day, but just didn't know about what. I just happened to have some collection of poetry and put that all together, and here are my first two self-published books. Nice. Wow. So you started when? When did you – you say you started in in high school? You started writing in high school? Well, well, the poetry part, yes. Right. Okay. What made you get into poetry? Uh. Or I think maybe I um I liked poetry before high school. In fact, I remember the first poem 
I ever heard was from Maya Angelou called Still I Rise. Yes, I beautiful hearing. poem. Yes, that's a beautiful poem. Yes. So in high school, you said, hey, you know, I want to start writing poems. No. So what are your poems based on? We well, I did write poems for, like, guy friends. Uh, like for like birth, like for their like their birthdays, and um also, I got real serious about the poetry writing when I was at South, South. which okay. is um short for University of South Alabama. There was like an event they were having. It was called Arts Inspired Road to Creation, and my poem um was now featured in my first book was on their program. Oh, okay, okay. And so I know you felt, you felt good about that, right? Yes. That's good. That's good. Um, so you wrote two books, you said? You wrote two books about poetry? Yes, and I'm working on more books that are non-poetry. Oh, okay. So what are the, what are the names of your two, uh, your books, your poetry books? Oh, the, my first one is the Eclectic Mind of V, and the um, second one is Free to Be V. Oh, all right. You think you could kick a little something from, uh, for us, for the audience, okay. for your first and second book? Okay, we, well, I'm we doing, we um, well, I, well, it is um, host choice. Which um, book you want to hear from, my first one or the second? Whatever you want. Whatever, whatever's easier for you, Waterfall. You know, we here, we here, you know, hear you out. You know what I mean? Okay, let me find something. Yes. All right. Yeah, can't wait. This is from my first book. All right, this poem is called Challenge. Challenge. It's based on the stupid, um, like, internet challenges. Here oh, we go. yeah. All right. Cinnamon challenge, pass out challenge, fire challenge, Charlie Charlie challenge, no lacking, Tide Pod, cold water, hot chip, hot water challenge, y'all. Well, here's a grand prize, more challenges, pay your medical bills challenge, get your bail money ready challenge. Your mom got to come identify your body challenge. And your loved one got to bury your dumb ass challenge. Mm. Well, those are the prices. Was it worth it? Wow. Wow. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Because there are some stupid ain't ain't they some stupid challenges. These challenges uh, are ridiculous. I mean, like, on um, some of these challenges, or some challenges I like, um, it's just as long as nobody gets, like, hurt, dead, or arrested. Like, some of these dumb challenges, like, are you really that bored? It, it looked like at the time, right. it was like 2014 when I was hearing about the cinnamon and the fire challenge. I, you know, I was a teenager once. I've been bored, but not that bored to get into but not that bored to get into the shower, pour flammable liquid on myself, mm. light myself on fire. That's crazy. Bruh. That is crazy. I can't believe it. I can't believe that people actually did that. Wow. Maybe it's for like attention or they're bored. Yes, the likes, the views. Yeah, yeah let, let me hear some. Get some attention. Yeah. Okay, let me find something from my second book. A lot. Now, this one right here, I'm trying to adapt it into stage and or screen. Mm-hmm. It's about the history of African-American dance. Oh, beautiful. Let me Love it. find this real quick. One point Hold on. It's called We Have the Dance. Yes. Yeah, it was first written in my second book. Um, I meant my first book, but my second book is uh, like a revision. I might add more one day. So here we go. All right. 
as a people, we have the dance. Way back in the motherland, we have, we always had a dance. Through times of joy, sadness to heal, and rites passage, we always have the dance. Through times of enslavement, we have the dance. Even when they try to take it away, we dance through the shade. From the juke joints to the migration, we have to dance. Even when it was time to pay the rent, we had to dance. Mm. Through depression and worldwide war, we have to dance. In the dance studios and sock hops, we have to dance. On television and through civil unrest, we have to dance. Live and in color. We can get smooth and we can get rough. Live and in color and integrated. Through the Soul Train days and the disco nights, we have to dance. With BET, MTV, VH1, and the box, we have to dance. Through social media, we have to dance. At Broadway, church, the club, community centers, competition, Hollywood, television, social gatherings, universities, all over the world, we have the dance. We even put our own spin on it. Because of this, I shake what my ancestors gave me and get my Jackson on. So to the future and beyond, we have the dance. Thank you. Wow. We have the dance. Wow. I like that. Well, I Amazing. Amazing. I'm trying to, thanks. I'm trying to down the stage and screen. It's just, I want to involve like time travel, like the different eras that I mentioned. Wow. Beautiful. That's nice. How do you how do you get your material together? You know, how do you come up with your poems? Well, different um things, different topics, everyday things, you know. Do you ever write about things you experience or things that you have gone through in life? Yes, I have. Okay. And so, so far you said you have two books out. Am I correct? Yes. yes. Which is poetry. Yeah, po- yeah. These the first two ones are poetry, and other ones, um, books that I'm working on, I need to do the research because some of the books I'm working on are based on true events, and I'm not, and real people, and I'm not trying to get sued. Right. Okay. Right. So based on true events, probably, right? You got to probably yeah, put that. Real people. Right. Okay, got to change the names up, change the characters a little bit. Yeah, for example, oh. um, I'm working on a book called Ken and Mike. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's about, uh, you know, Kenny Babyface Edmonds and Michael Jackson. Oh, okay. Yeah. You knew them personally? Of- you knew them? No, I don't know them po- personally. I never met them, but they are my favorite artists. Okay. And also, it's just I noticed both of them, they do have some similarities. Really? In fact, they did uh, meet meet before. In fact, there's like interview like what when Babyface like how he how he got to meet Michael Jackson. It was like back in the seventies when he was like a teenager. And when he was growing up in Indianapolis, and the Jackson mm-hmm. Five was coming over there, and he wanted to meet him, and it took some lying for him to do that. Right. And as they came adults, they like worked together on music. In fact, right. I, like in an interview that Babyface did, he talked about he used to sound like his singing voice was like Michael Jackson. In fact, like his first musical performance he ever did, he sung "Who's Loving You" by the Jackson Five. Well, he said he did sound he did sound like Michael until puberty kicked in. Right, right. Well, they are you know they musical 
geniuses, that's for sure. You know, mm-hmm. so sad that Michael Jackson lost his life, but they are excellent artists. Most they they Michael Jackson was definitely a excellent. He was a genius. He was a genius. Mm-hmm. And Babyface, I just saw him in a concert with Anita Baker about two weeks ago. He I I didn't even mm-hmm. realize how many songs this man has written and um, was an executive for. It's amazing. He is just outstanding. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. That would be cool, you know. So, you said you got other books that you're writing that you getting ready to put out, yeah. right? Well, oh, I'm that's working cool. on, I just need to type some stuff first. It's just they kind right. of like rough draft doing the research. Like, for example, another book I'm working on, it's called Clout Killer. It was, Clout Killer. It was, it was, it was about um, Yolanda Holmes and her son Kwame Wilson. Yolanda Holmes, she she was a beauty, like a beauty um sh- shop supplier. I mean, like, owner in mm-hmm. Chicago, and her only son was Kwame Wilson. He's like he said he was like a local rapper or whatever had his own YouTube channel. He was like you know young QC and and his channel's called like QC Works. Like he and a couple of his friends she he set his mom up to be killed. Oh my god. And after and after she died, he inherited like her money and he was like uh, spend it on stuff like cars and like name brand stuff, showing this ill gain, gotten gains off on social media. He got like thousands of dollars from like his inheritance and bank accounts of his mom's, and he paid the killer um like thirty five or seventy dollars, and that's when that killer started talking. And wow, Qu- yeah, Kwame's doing like ninety nine years. <clears throat> it's terrible, terrible. So, who are your? Do you have any favorite authors, well, poets? Well, my, well, one of my favorite poets is Maya Angelou. Oh, no doubt. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Shout out to Maya Angelou. Yes. Yeah, she's she's she was a beautiful, beautiful poet. Most definitely. Anybody else? That that inspired you? Yeah, well, I remember my sister had a a do a poem uh, for like a Black History program, probably when she was in her early teens. It's called like "I Too Am America." Uh huh. Even like Denzel recited that. You know, Denzel Washington he recited that poem and. The great debaters. Right. Okay. Nice. So you um yeah, you know, your middle name is my sister's middle name too. Her name is uh Elizabeth. Yes, yeah. and also I got that middle name from like even though her name was it, like my maternal great grandmother um, you know her name was Lizzie. That's where okay. Lizzie came from. Okay. So what else do you do? What else do you do besides uh, writing poems and you getting ready to get started with a new book? Well, what other uh, things? I write. I have two blogs. Okay. Tell me about that. Well, my first blog, it was called My First Blog, because at the time, I didn't know what to call my blog. Right. It's now known as Waterfalls World. It talks about different topics, like current events and things. And my second blog is called Waterfalls Online Art Gallery. It's not my own artwork, but I feel like with um, this second one, I feel like my degree my degree in art history is being put in a good use and I discuss my favorite artworks on there. Ah, so you 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 be you you be putting the paintbrush to the hand, huh? 
uh, not really. It's like di- I talk <laughs> about different artists and like they critique their artworks and stuff. Okay. Do you paint? Well, not good enough to be like a professional, <laughs> but no. I, I would like to get like look like photography more. Okay. At first, I just need to get the like equipment and stuff, and and also, it's just that photography it has in evolved from the gara type mm-hmm. uh, okay. so I do want to do like a photography free book it's called Where the Queens At Where the Queens At by here y'all yeah that sounds good it, what inspired me to want to work on Where the Queens At there was this photographer named James C. Lewis the mm-hmm. third I think um, if I get the person photographer's name right i apologize i saw his like photography and it showed like different like african kings in history oh wow and i look at it and i realized where are the queens at oh yeah i love stuff like that bring back like ancestry times you know i love to see stuff like that like but he did he, he only had kings. He just had kings. He had no queens. I did email something like it, it had, he had different models posed as different African kings like Shaka Zulu, uh, some from ancient. Shout Egypt. out to Shaka. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shout out to Shaka. But wow, where the okay. queens at? Like there was like Egyptian queens we do know about, but that was like African queens we don't know about. Right. Some were even actually like warrior queens, like they actually in the battlefield fighting. Like the woman king? Like that? Yeah. Okay. The homie. The homie. Yeah. And speaking, it of, was. The home, and speaking of the homie, here, Alabama, like somewhere in Mobile, somewhere it's called Africa Town. Mm hmm. You ever heard of the Clotilda? No, I ain't never heard of the Clotilda. Tell me, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I did. I think I did. Tell me a little bit about it, though. Bring me back. Well, it was a, like getting rid, probably prior to the Civil War, probably having started yet or whatever. But I heard years before that, the uh, actually bringing Africans to America mm-hmm. was like, Ban like the slave trade been banned, but they were sneaking the Africans anyway. I think I, think I might have did an episode with that. I, it sounds familiar, the Clotilda. Wow. Yeah, okay. I remember reading this um book um about it from my African American studies class when I was at South. Mm-hmm. And it was like these Irish brothers and like. Alabama fever, you know, like the cotton was like the cash crop, and it was like a bet that to bring these Africans into this country. Right. And my mom, she's a retired um, sixth grade teacher, and mm-hmm. she and she had one of the like the descendants of Cud Cudjo Lewis in her class. Oh wow. Wow. Shout out to mom. How mom doing? Is she good? Yes. She has on YouTube channel called uh, Granny Hanny. Ma- Granny Hanny? Yes. Get out of here. Your mom got a YouTube channel? Yes. Wow. That's cool. That's cool. You ever be on it? I'm on YouTube channel. I got 79 do- um, follow um, subscribers. It's just I need to maybe do more videos I can right. things. yeah well you all in due time you know you're doing a lot now you got your poetry books you know you're getting ready to write another book you know it seems like you know you, you're dipping your hands in a lot of different things so you know in all due time you're gonna it's all gonna work out thank you yeah yeah how'd you get the name waterfall I can't remember. Because what was it TLC don't go no, chasing no. waterfall no? Oh, it man. It wasn't. No. I, I, I use waterfall for a lot of reasons. For example, there's like plenty of people with my government name. 
I just wanted something that would stand out, you know? Yeah, I feel you. Like me with Preezy. Ain't gonna be too many Preezy's. I like that name. It actually come from, like, my last name. You know, my name is Dupree. So there's somebody, there's an officer, she used to call me Preezy. You know, hey, Preezy. And I said, I like that. You know, I had another nickname is Blinky. So it was either Blinky or Preezy. I said, I'm going to go with Preezy. So I know what you're talking about. You want to stand out. I like Waterfall. I like that. And I just wanted to know how you come up with it. But I like that. I thought maybe, you know, listening to TLC. Like, hey, I'm going to choose that. Yeah, it's one of my favorite songs and favorite groups. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to TLC. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That's why I said, don't go chasing waterfalls. I like that. That's cool. Waterfall Adams. So what else is in store for you? What else you looking at? Not only present, well, but your future. Well, I do want to model and act. I do love to dance. Oh, that's and nice. Like comedy skits on um, so- social media. You and be I doing comedy? To, Get out of here. I would like to. It's just I want to take more. Even though I do have a minor in dramatic arts, I do want to take more acting classes. That's nice. That's good. You got a joke? Tell me a joke right now. Let me hear a joke. I'm ready. Next on stage right now, everybody get ready. Are you ready for some laugh? You want to laugh? Uh, she coming to the stage. She's from Alabama. You from Alabama, right? Just want to make sure. I, I live in Alabama. She lives in oh, Alabama. Not, Where you well, at now? Not, uh, you? Well, I do have a good sense of humor, but I don't know about, you know, stand-up comedy. Got to be well, a game on that one. Nah, do me a give me a let's let's give a round of applause right now for Waterfall Adams. There she go. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me hear that joke. Well, well, this is improvised, <laughs> so here we go. Why did a chicken cross the road? Ah, let me see. Hmm. Well, somebody to um, like when I was at South, somebody told me. Upset to get away from me. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) To get away from you? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, well, well, hey, I know one thing. Even though that joke sounded a bit lame, this is not the Apollo. That's ain't the Apollo. This is Listen Up, Listen In podcast. Yep. But that's all right. It's not like I'm getting booed in the first few. Nah, years you ain't getting second. booed. We don't boo you. We don't boo on this show. We hand clap, baby. It's all love here on Listen Up, Listening Podcast. We don't boo nobody. We don't do that. It's all love. Even if it was corny, it's still love. I laugh. The chicken laugh. Yeah. Everybody laugh. Well, sorry I didn't come up with any jokes for it. <laughs> nah, it's all good. No, no, no. It ain't. We we have fun on this show. Even if it's something corny, it's still funny. This is how we do. It's all love here. So oh, you got another joke? I forgot to mention about the third book I'm working on. Oh, called, tell me about it. Tell me about it, Waterfall. It's called Make Money While Sitting on Your ASS, but the SS has dollar signs on it. Oh, Make Money While Sitting on Your Booty. Yeah. Yes, what kind of inspired that title? I saw books like um, The Sun and the Art of Not Giving an F, uh-huh. um, Rich B, Boss B, You're a mm. Bad A at Making Money, You're a Bad A at this. Those titles wow. really did got my t- kind of stuck out and got my attention. Wow. So maybe uh, that title, it really um, it stuck out. It wow. stuck out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I wrote about my own frustrations, about my own experience about the job market, mm-hmm. especially when you're black, a millennial, you have autism, like me. And oh, you you have my, autism? Yes. Okay. My okay. case is not sev- that severe. Okay. And do you know um, what the percentage of people – Unemployment with people with autism. Tell me. I'd like to it's know like about this. I have a cousin that has autism, but I like 
Tell me about it. It's a like like ninety nine like ninety percent. Ninety percent of say that again. I'm sorry. Like the unemployment rate with like autism people, autistic people. Wow. Ninety like percent. One of those statistics I read. So you saying it's hard for them to get a job? Well, it's, I don't know, it's hard for me. There. Yeah, it can, Do you, it you think can, that they're not being fair when it comes to people who have autism? Yes. Wow. I, in fact, I picked up a book um, from Amazon. It's called The Autistic. Uh, here it is. Okay. It's Tell from, me about it. It's from Robin Stewart, The Autistic Friendly Guide to Self Employment. Mm-hmm. And also, yeah, I'm not finished reading it yet, but it's a good book that it really uh, spoke to me, helpful to me. And I've also been working with a company from Nigeria called the Precious Digital Marketing Agency. They've been helping with, with marketing and promotion. They even made the logo of my personal and creative brand and some reels in my book trailers to, you know, promote my book. And right okay. now we're working on getting a crowdfunding site together for me. Awesome. That's awesome. I'm very proud of you. How? Thank you. When, when did you just, when... Did your autism start? Were you? I was probably born with it. I was maybe I was, but I don't know. I was diagnosed probably three or four years old. I was, okay. Or I probably also had ADHD or something. But things kept okay. that ADHD kind of calmed down as I aged. But I still have autism though. It was called something else called PDD. Mhm. Or now it's probably called PDD and OS. Okay pervasive developmental disorder right it's just it took me a long time to even want to talk about it wow wow and also in the third book i'm working on right now the thing is the the job market is not like it was when my parents were looking for a job i have a sister who's like two years and ten days older than me and it's not like it was when she was um, looking for a job or even for, for previous generations. Right. At, like, at all. Like, some oh. industries even die out. Some jobs get, like, extinct, replaced by AI, outsourced. And this is book I also want to mention. It's called Reinvention Roadmap by Liz Ryan. Okay. Tell me about that book. All right, I have a paper copy with, uh, with me. I just need to find it. It's talking okay. about how the um, this 20, new millennium job market is not like it was in like previous generations. Right. And the, and it taught me one thing that's really stood out to me. The only person that's in control of your career is you. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I see that you did not allow your autism or your um ADHD stand in your way of you getting your career, your uh, degrees, and that's that's awesome. Yeah, I'm surprised I even got my um, four year degree because on the um, my first semester I self I took five classes, couldn't handle it, and I ended up on academic probation. From then on, I took it four semester, um, four courses at a time each semester wow that's excellent proud of you thank you wow keep up the good work wow are you um do you speak um about your autism do you do you talk about it amongst others um well lately i have been 
it's just I gotta get comfortable enough to even say anything. Oh, okay. Okay, well I'm glad you on my show talking about it. Because I um I know with autism, um sometimes it's hard to like kinda express your emotions, right? Kinda yeah, hard to conversate. Yeah. Depends on the severity. Right. And then, then ADHD is like a person is nonstop stop talking. They Wait. just keep going and going and going. Well, I remember I was kind of hyperactive as a child. Really? Okay. Uh, yes, and also, it's just also in like in the black community, like someone who has like a mental illness is looked at as like a stigma. Right. Okay. So what do you think that they should do for those that have autism as far as the workplace, the jobs? Like uh, freelancing, self-employment, start your own business. In fact, there have been stories of like plenty of these these entrepreneurs, they either got fired from their job or, or couldn't find a job. So they start their own thing. There's even like right. businesses that you can start without any money. Right. Well, you know, there are entrepreneurs um, that are autistic. Five, there are five successful people with autism. You have a man named Sotoshi Tajiri. Um, you have John Elder Robinson. You have Andrea... Suva Lotus, you have Spencer Kelly, you have Bonnie Arnwine. So there are um, a lot of people, you know, a few people that have proven to the world that I don't care if I have autism. I can do just as much as you can. You know, it's just I'm different. I may do things different. You know what I mean? So. Never yes. let um, your autism stop you from doing And you have it. You went to school. You got your degrees. You wrote two books. You're getting ready to write another one. You're getting ready to be a, get into actress and you, you, the arts and, and all this other stuff. So you're doing good, sis. Yeah, it's been like 10 years um, coming in December when I got my degree. I worked my behind off for that degree. That's right. There and, you go. And the advice I want to uh, say to like other creatives is, what you do is a real job. No matter what somebody says, I hate when people say about get a real job. What I do is a real job. Thank you. And don't worry about what people say. You know they be hating. Waterfall. I don't anymore. Yeah, I don't. The thing that drives you crazy. Yeah, I'm sure it does. I'm sure. It's, also, I'm sure it does. And I'm telling to like. Like older generations, like parents, live guards, whatever, they shouldn't pressure their kid to go in this particular career or this particular university or because you went there or whatever. But you don't know about a time, let's say, they're on it for like a job permit or the time they get ready to graduate from high school, that college or that major or that um, career track, job, career or whatever, is going to be there. That's right. That's right. But the key is, let me tell you what the key is. The T is, the, the, the key is, um, you have to push forward. You know what I mean? You got to push forward and honor your limitations. Honor that. You know what I mean? And when you're doing that, you knowing what your limitations are, you're allowing others to know what your your limitations are, but it shouldn't stop you. It shouldn't stop you from, like, advocating for yourself. Because sometimes we got to advocate for ourselves, you know, to keep pushing through no matter who you are. It don't, it don't matter if you're autistic or not. Everybody got to advocate for themselves and let everybody know, hey, this is what I can do. You know, don't worry about what I'm doing. I know my limits. I know what I can do. You know, I'll get to this to that this day. I'll get to that the next day. As long as you know what your limitations are. And you keep going forward. And the good thing is when you have support, it means a lot. 
You do you feel like you have support? Yes. That's awesome. See? You got people that got your back. That means a lot. All other people that's talking, talking negative, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, especially if you're doing something positive. If you're doing something positive, you keep going. You believe in God? Yes. Well, there you go. There you go. So you you keep doing you keep doing what you're doing, Waterfall. You ain't you ain't got that name for nothing now. It's it's, it's flowing freely, baby. You keep going. Cause it sounds like you're doing a lot, and you have you have done a lot. So you got to keep going. You know. Yes, yes. So you know, so so what else you want to tell me? So so what else you want to tell me? Well, other ways I make money, I do micro tests, test what websites. There are sites where you like let's get paid, like listen to music. I'm doing the best I can. It's just them. The thing was like there's this um. YouTube video from Yaspri Singh. He has a YouTube channel called Minority Mindset. And he said something that made sense to me. The job market sucks. Okay? Mm-hmm. And here how it sucks. The competition for getting a job is much bigger now. And it's easier to start your own business than getting a job. And here's an example of what like happened to me. Um, like after, a few months after I graduated from South, I moved to Georgia, and I applied for jobs. I didn't really get the interview, but I did get an interview. But I, I did get an interview. But I didn't get the job though. And I remember before I had to move back to Alabama, I applied for uh, a department store. Mm-hmm. Like a year later. After I applied a year later, they actually called me a year later. Wow. And and I, what I mentioned is how the competition was bigger. I'm com- now I'm not only competing with my local community. I'm competing with people all over the world. I'm competing right. with AI. I'm competing with senior citizens because you know they retirement fund is not really enough for them to live off of. Right. Wow. Well, you keep going. But hey, no matter what anybody says or whatever, I know one thing is this. The thing, what I'm doing is legal. I'm not doing anything where uh, the, where the law enforcement got to kick open the door for me. No, don't do that. No, no, don't do that one for, don't be, don't do that. (laughs) Don't do that legal. (laughs) <laughs> you keep going you keep because there's a lot let me tell you something there's a lot there are a lot of entrepreneurs that are autistic you believe there is uh dr temple grandin he's a professor of animal science wolfgang amadeus mozart mozart had autism um uh, this um autistic entrepreneurs can you text them to me sometime please I absolutely how about emily dickinson she was a writer and poet anthony ianani ianani he's a national championship winning uh, basketball player um sir anthony hopkins you know him he played in the movie um uh oh, yeah. come on um I'm, silence I'm, of the lambs remember him yeah Yes, and I yeah, he, remember, he uh, had Asperger's. He yeah, has a, uh, a Albert Einstein. Theoretical physicist. Yes, I, Albert Piana. Einstein. Danny Bowman, Andy Warhol. Uh, you yeah. know, they had Darryl a little. Daryl Hannah. Yes, Daryl Hannah. She played in Steel Magnolia. She she played that that what was that mermaid that little fish. Flash. Oh, that. Yeah, Splash. I like that movie. Bill, Bill, she used to date yeah. um, what's that um, JFK Jr. What about Dan Aykroyd? He had traits yeah, of Bill. autism, so you like Susan Boyle. Like you, I think you said Susan Boyle, right? Right. Clay Marzo, he's a surfer. Tony Deblois, Dr. Vernon Smith. So I'm saying, yo, you can. Do whatever you want. These are people 
entrepreneurs, stars, actors, actresses, look at Mozart, Einstein, Albert Einstein. So the sky is the limit, waterfall. You got to just keep doing and what you need to do and um, go on these sites regarding autism. And you'd be surprised of all the different things that you could do. You could be an advocate. You know what I mean? You can speak, talk to others about it, you know, that need to be educated about autism. You ever think about working in a school? A school? Yeah, school. Escuela. No? Well, hopefully not as a teacher. <laughs> what you want? Maybe talk to the kids and get and, and go home, but to teach or maybe teach online. Too much, right? Too much, right? Check this out. You ever think you went to school for to college and stuff? They got they got jobs like accountants. They got uh uh what else they got? A auditor. You know, uh, if you're good in math, you know what I mean? If you order math, math, no. Okay, because I ain't like, I ain't like, math was my worst subject in school. I couldn't, I'm, I got lucky I made two plus two. I can't go no further than that. That's it. No, I can't the go. Simple no. math, I got well, but the complicated stuff, I'm lucky. Uh, I was like, just a C, Jesus. Some <laughs> right. And I remember, um, taking like science tests and I would get a headache after the test. Yeah. And I remember yeah. had something called test taking anxiety. Like you've been oh, knowing yeah. about this test, you study for this test and then you get this test and you like, what the F is this? Mm-hmm. And I would hate it like teachers would put on tests things we didn't even cover. Right. Right. Well I'm gonna read something to you real quick and I hope this will encourage you to Look at these jobs, and and I, I'm going to read this real quick. It says, as more and more individuals with autism enter the workforce, it is becoming clear that finding just the right job presents a bit of a challenge. That's why we began researching 30 ideal jobs for people on the autism spectrum, because each person is unique, and no one's experience with autism is the same. We included on our list a variety of jobs from janitor to veterinarian. While some will be most suitable for those who may be nonverbal or who have additional challenges, others will be most appropriate for those with high functioning autism or Asperger's. However, all of our listed jobs were recommended to us by those on the autism spectrum. We've even included the average salary for each job. According to pay scale, and keep scrolling for 30 ideal jobs for people on the autism spectrum. So you got an accountant, their average pay is 51000 You got an actuary, their average pay is 90000 That's a, a analyst for insurance companies. You probably will be good in that. Talking 90000 a year, waterfall. I'll, um, look, I'll look that up. Yeah, architect. Let's see what they actually do. Auditor. You want to work on some cars? Automotive technician? Nah, right? No. Carpenter? Cashier? Caterer? You like to cook? Oh, yeah. Maybe I could do the caterer. Like a, yeah. Maybe like a side gig. It's just I need to get like, there you go. some kind Bacon. of certifications. Yes. I do that. And there's like cottage food laws and stuff. Just got to get your, fr- your food service. I think you got to get your first food service certificate. You know, as long What's as you know how to make that, don't go up in there and burn oh, people some, biscuits and stuff well, like that. Be... Vendors licensing. Yeah, I look yeah. Up my state, uh, like state laws and stuff. You good and... with computers? They got computer well, programmers, data analysts, data entry. I should say data, data entry clerk. You like pets? Uh, they even got dog trainers. I'm allergic to cats. Oh, okay. So you stick to the dog. Get the cat. Not really. It's just that because my mom has like allergy, like fur. Oh, and animals, okay, yeah. The only fit, the only pets I ever had was fish. Okay, a fish. All right. What about a financial analyst? Somebody who's skilled in math. But you said, ah, we ain't messing with no math. 
forensic science technician? Gardner? I heard. Janitor? Journalist? You like to write? Journalist is good for those with an interest in current events and a good grasp of the English language. I'll, Website. I'll look, I'll look yeah. into that, even though I heard that some of those get jobs are about to be lost, um, like lost to AI. I heard of something called freelance journalism. Like some of the, I need to find out if I have have like a degree in journalism to do freelance journalism. What about photography? You said you wanted to get into that. Yes. Oh, Here it goes. Yes. Average salary is forty six thousand hundred and seventy nine. Those on the autism spectrum who enjoy being uh, creative and taking photographs. There you go. Uh, yes. Not only I like to take pictures, I like to have my picture taken. Hi, need, that's even better. It's just that I need to raise money to get the equipment first and learn more about Photoshop. Yeah, because you could do weddings, families, graduations. You work for yourself when you do that. Yeah, phone. Yeah. What's that? Oh, what's that? Oh, landscape photography. I'm mm-hmm. gonna show like different types of photography that I probably have I don't know about yet. I heard of like stock photography. Uh, I, I'm gonna do gonna do more research on the photography. Definitely. And you like writing. Why not? You're a writer now. Anyone who has a good grasp of the English language can find a way to make a living as a writer. You're writing books. You're doing, oh, you know and what I mean? I to mention, I write articles as well. In fact, I have a couple articles on medium.com. Nice. That's and awesome. It's been a while since I did this other one, uh, I think it was like Hub Pages. It's been a while since I wrote articles on that. I'll get back, we're going to get back to that. Get on back to it. Definitely. What you need to do is, listen, the books that you wrote, the two poems, the, the poetry books, send them to me. I'll promote your books. If you look on my you page, are you my, are you my friend on Facebook? Are we friends on Facebook? I don't know. I don't know, but I'll look you up. And also, listen up, listen my in. Look me up. They're available on Amazon and uh, there you go. other outlets. Me, I'm trying to get uh, one of my yeah, get them on other outlets and also do audiobook versions of my books. I need to get equipment for that as well. Do more training on that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, so it sounds book. like sounds like you got things in order. You got a little plan. You know. The thing is, there's this other book I read. It's called "Your Book Is Not Your Business Card," and mm-hmm. it's also the title is talking about 18 sources of income with like your book or whatever. And I was like, 18. Um. Um income sources oh this i got to read wow I heard of like a seven or nine source of income but 18 let me <laughs> read this you do a lot of reading i've been reading since i was two nice wow sound like matilda yeah remember that movie matilda yes i haven't read that book in the sixth grade yeah, Matilda, I just watched it last night that's one of my favorite movies matilda was at the library at four years old <laughs> So that's good. Keep on reading, you know, because the the brain that the brain is powerful. We don't want it to go dead. You got to keep it, keep it going. So it sounds like you got a lot of great ideas. You just, you know what I mean? Just keep going. But definitely get on that, go on that website. Uh, If I see any more stuff, I'll email it to you. You know, there's a lot of jobs for people that are autistic, you know, you could do a lot. And sis, you don't went to college, you got these degrees, you know. I would have never thought you were autistic until you told me. So God bless you, you know what I mean? God bless you. Oh, I have been doing like freelance running jobs as well through Upwork. Nice. And I plan on um doing some on get like doing like freelance gigs on Fiverr. The thing right. is, I need to uh, ah, five is good. Yes, and make sure they approve the gig. Now explain freelance. What's freelance for all those people out there that may not know what it is? Probably me too. Explain it. Where it's like where you work for yourself. And what do you do? What do you? Like you oh, so you just do services. different things? Okay, okay. Yes, I see like, what you're saying. It's like freelance, like handy people, freelance yes. writers. 
freelance journalist. Like, like I'm on my computer right now working on one of my micro task gigs, and I'm looking up the word freelance. Okay. Yeah, let's let's look up freelance. Let's look up the definition. Look, what is freelance that? job. Hmm. Let's see how it is defined. It is a type of self employment. Instead of being employed by a country, freelancers tend to work as self employed delivering their service on a contract or project basis. basis. Okay. Okay. And a freelance is paid per hour for their work at an agreed upon either rate. Pay, either they, it's one of those ways you can get paid per hour or get mm-hmm. paid when the project is completed if it meets the claim approval. Yes. You can work 38, 36 hours per week, you know. Work 36 hours per week. Yeah, that's um, one of the jobs, they, the hourly jobs, what they post on. What they do you travel? Them. Do you travel? Uh, yeah, driving has been like a difficulty thing uh, for okay. me uh, with my autism. But I do like to travel though. You you fly? You take the plane? Well, I haven't, um, I haven't took a plane since like 2002. It was around the time my grandfather passed away. Oh, sorry. We uh, flew for the few, you know, thank you. Went to the funeral. Yeah. It's not okay. it wasn't like trauma. It's not because like I'm not uh, um, experiencing any trauma from flying on a plane. It's just that um couldn't really. I just haven't um went anywhere where it required me to take a plane. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, and you don't drive, so you take public transportation. Uh, well, where I, um the area I'm living right now, there's like not like that much access to public transportation. Okay. But I would like to move somewhere where it does like let's say California or New York. You wanna come to New York? Oh, New York. Buses and trains run all night long. Yes. The city that never sleeps. In fact, my dad who was born in Antigua, his fa- him and his family came it was like nineteen sixty eight when him and his family came to like New York Mm-hmm. Antigua. This okay. Is now called Antigua and is it called Antigua and Barbados now? Mm-hmm. Yes. It's like he, he's one of he's one of, he's from like one of those Caribbean islands. Oh, okay, okay. Where are you from? What, what's your nationality from? I was born in Purdue, Kentucky, which just happened to be in America. Oh right, America. <laughs> oh right, that's what's up. So you're not your parents from the south. Well, my my dad's from Antigua. My mom, okay, she was born in Paducah, Kentucky, as well. Paducah, Paducah, Kentucky. Oh, that sound country. Paducah, I couldn't get it right. The from Paducah, 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 Kentucky. It's in McCracken County. McCracken. Oh wow, at least the Kraken. So tell me, where can we find you, Miss Waterfall Adams? Where can we give us your information? Your YouTube. Your email, your Facebook, Instagram, permalink. Where can we find you? Well, I'm on. Uh, I have like two Facebook pages. One that's like All my right. personal page. hiding from the government. Go ahead. And and then the other one is like a page for my blogs. All right. And I'm on Twitter, TikTok, Twitter. Instagram, Tumblr. Reddit, LinkedIn. YouTube. What's your name, though? How we gonna find you? You telling us what you own, but how we gonna find your waterfall? What you go by? Well, on the the first Facebooks, like Brock Elizabeth Adams, and mm-hmm. yeah, hope you can find me there. And also the um, second one is Waterfalls World slash Waterfalls Online Art Gallery. On Twitter, I'm at V-A-Z-O-N-N-I-159. On okay. Instagram, I'm Waterfall Adams. On TikTok, I'm Waterfall Adams 86. 
on Tumblr, I'm a, mine is like the same from, uh, like the same handle on the Twitter one. Okay. And I'm on LinkedIn. My, oh, yeah, it's like my, it's like my full name as well. There's like plenty of people with my full government name. Good luck finding me. <laughs> we'll find you. We'll find you. We'll find you. It's a nice name though, Veronica Adams. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's Veronica, nice. it came from my dad's mo- uh my dad's mother. Okay, okay. Her name was Lana Veronica. Lana Veronica. Veronica Ambrose Benjamin. <clears throat> a lot. Couldn't find her. Yeah. So you had to give her a nickname. Names, one, yeah, one of my, uh, yeah, one of, yeah, that came from one of her names. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I enjoyed you being on the show. I'd love you to come back. You know, I would love for you to come back, you know. Yeah, and, uh, if there's any more endeavors going on, I'll, I know where to go to. Have you what? Like, any What'd more endeavors, I'm tr- of my creative endeavors, I want to talk about yes i know where to go yes yes you're always welcome to come here you shoot me out an email hey preezy i want to be on your show i got something to talk about and i'm thinking about having a poetry night and i'm gonna invite you now i'm gonna say hey waterfalls like you're in new york come right? on through or i want you to a virtual is this like a virtual poetry night you know we me and my co-host guests we want to have people come on on a show and read their poems, you know, and you'll have the opportunity to read you because I used to write poems, you know, I stopped, but I can write a little something, something, you know, but, uh, uh, I've been trying to look for my poetry and see, that's the thing. When you write, you need to put it up somewhere and you should copyright your stuff. So nobody don't oh, take yes. it. Yes. That's oh, yes. very important. Wait, copyright like your poems. Books, I'm going yes. to do like an updated revised version of them because I do yeah. need to uh, especially all my books I need to really do the copyright page yeah you gotta copyright your stuff now people steal your stuff now you know you be coming up there to be or not to be waterfalls that's who I be you know he's in public domain excuse me public What'd domain oh yes 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 you got to copyright your stuff now. You don't want nobody taking your stuff. So when I do do the poetry night, I'm going to call you. I'm going to email you. I'm going to say, waterfalls, come through. I'm going to kick some, you know, some poetry to us, to my audience, you know. And you, you're going to do your thing. Just like you read today, you're going to read your stuff. Read your stuff that you, wrote, that you, you know, wrote down in your book. Sounds good? Yes, it does sound good. Is this like an in-person thing, or in person? No, we or, gonna be just like we talking now. Yeah, it's person, gonna be on a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I see that, man. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. you are gonna be on a podcast, and my this podcast is 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 international now, so it's gonna be all over. Okay, okay. it's gonna be everywhere. So be ready, cause everybody gonna hear your poems. So get ready, yes. and, and bring yes. them jokes yes. too. The chicken cross the road. Or I have, hopefully I have some funnier jokes. Yeah, you know, it don't matter. You know, the chick, why the chicken cross the road? I don't know, to get the Popeyes. I don't know. It's all in love. It's all in fun. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm corny, but you know, we have fun on the show. We have fun. That's what it's all about. Nobody's judging nobody, okay? Yes. We okay, have a good one time. More, yes, what one you got more thing say? before I go is, hey, yeah, one more freelancing thing. Freelancing is, the beauty of freelancing is, hey, you get to work with people all over the world since like yes. the business coming more glo- it's like more globalized now. Yes, yes, freelancing would be good. Yeah, but do your homework though. Do your homework. True. Yeah. Well, it's great. I'm happy that you came on Listen Up Listening podcast. I appreciate you so much. And um, yeah, we have Waterfall Adams. Telling us all the things that she do. Now, give me a, give me something for the audience. Say, give me a positive quote. Give me some nuggets. Oh, speaking of quotes, 
let me uh my um second okay. book got quotes in it some i made some yeah. um the credit goes to whoever came up with the quotes okay give me a give me an inspirational quote right now let me hear it routine can become a rut mm-hmm. god gives the author revised and updated versions you can find god in unexpected places and you can find the devil in unexpected places my book is my business not all doctors and lawyers are rich no job is safe and one more quote yes before we go uh this quote is from tyra banks never dull your shine from somebody if you want to um, hear these quotes by the eclectic mind wait of the well you won't find quotes on that book but you will find them in free to bv wow interesting thank you waterfalls that was very very nice and I appreciate you for being on my show. And I want to let everybody know out there, check out Waterfalls. She gave y'all all her information. And I'm going to try to get Waterfalls back on my show again, you know. And God bless all those that's, that's doing what they have to do no matter what you got going on in your life, whatever disability you have, you can keep, just stay focused. You can keep going. Don't let nobody tell you nothing. It's all about you. Don't worry about nobody else. You just keep going and stay focused and stay positive. I just want to say live, laugh, love. Love you first because you can't love anyone or anything unless you love yourself first. Stay healthy. Stay focused. Keep God first in your life and love and squeeze your family members and your pets because they family too. Just a little bit tighter. I love you, mommy and daddy, forever. And I want to say, Miss Waterfalls, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really enjoyed you. And uh, we'll talk soon. How'd that sound? It sounds nice. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Hey, this is Waterfall Adams. I am a creative professional, and you have been listening to Listen Up, Listen In podcast with Preezy. Make sure you tune in. And also check me out on my website at waterfalladams.blogspot.com, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter, and Pinterest. social media you'll be able to see all the platforms my podcast is on wherever you consume my podcast hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when a new episode is posted rate review and share this podcast listen up listen in listen up listen in yeah